Mr. Cuellar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I passed some legislation, uh, but I don't think FEMA's follow up on this. Uh, redundancy, elimination, <clears throat> enhanced performance of those grants. So I'm, I'm very happy that you're talking about uh, some of the things that we need to address. So I'd, I'd like to uh, talk to you later about this uh, legislation that's on the books. Uh, let me go over a couple questions that we confer with uh, Governor Abbott's uh, office. As you know, there's some issues that we have down there in Texas. And folks over here, there's, uh, I think there was four appropriators from Texas that uh, we've been working on these issues. Uh, the first one, uh, and uh, Mr. Long, how long is this disaster relief funding? Uh, how, well, how can this disaster relief uh, funding be, uh, be used? Because I know what generally what we're talking about, but we want to make sure that that information is connected with the state and the locals. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when it comes to just in, in general, and we can provide you details, uh, but the two major programs are individual assistance and public assistance, and that's what we typically pay for. Um, and when it comes to public assistance, there's multiple categories. There's emergency work, and then there's permanent work. So the emergency work, for example, goes to offset the cost of response, uh, the response. It also uh, offsets the cost of debris removal. But then as you get into the permanent work of fixing infrastructure, public facilities, um, all the, you know, funding out of the DRF can go to, to, to not only fund that, but then on the individual assistance side, it's other needs. Uh, it could be anything from dental needs as a result uh, of someone who's, who's had problems from, you know, from, the, from the flood from that standpoint to rental assistance to uh, direct you know, uh, critical needs assistance, $500 to help you buy groceries, um, you know, all the way to the housing mission that, that's there. So it's a wide array, and that's just you know, a very small sample of what it can And what do you for. think the goal of the disaster relief funding should be? Because as you know, in Texas, when we presented the, uh, our, our thing to the, um, uh, to the um, White House, uh, there seems to be a disconnect from the way we look at the goal of disaster relief right. funding. So in, in my opinion, well, that's a, that's a tough question too, because the, in my opinion, save lives in the response, kickstart recovery, okay? Um, the other thing that the DRF... And as you know, Texas, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, Texas is say, well, how do we prevent uh, some sure. of these issues in the future? And that's where we're having a little disagreement. Yep, okay. Out of the DRF, the post-disaster funding that we're talking about, Section 404, a certain percentage of funding that we obligate becomes available for mitigation projects, not only through 404, but then also Section 406. There's opportunities to mitigate infrastructure, public assistance, you know, damaged infrastructure. So they can actually utilize funding. Access becomes available to that funding after the disaster to do mitigation. Now, what I would propose is, is that you leave the 406 mitigation funding there to fix the infrastructure that's damaged. If it was damaged, let's rebuild it to a higher standard with that funding. The 404 money needs to go up front because we require a local community or a state community to design a mitigation plan, okay? But they don't have access to the funding they need to necessarily implement it. Now, it's not FEMA's responsibility to create resiliency. I ultimately believe that resiliency lies in the hands of local elected officials through building codes and proper land use planning. FEMA's assistance just supplements, you know, this capability. But, you know, if we move the 404 money to the front end, it does a couple things. It reduces the complexity of recovery and the problems in, in increasing how long recovery takes, but it allows communities to properly plan and execute their mitigation plans up front before disaster strike. Well, I would ask you to uh, continue working with uh, our governor's office on this issue because I think uh, my two other colleagues here from Texas, we've been having different discussions. As you know, there's a little difference of opinion from the state of Texas and up here, which is basically, uh, you know, I guess the last question tied in, I think you answered already, is, you know, is disaster relief designed or intended to support long-term recovery to make communities whole, which is... Do you just fix that issue, or can you use some of those resources for preventing yeah. some of those issues in the future? So, so, otherwise, yeah. we'll be back again. Yep, and, and uh, well, here again, uh, I'll never make a community whole. Uh, and and I, don't, I don't believe that FEMA has the authority to make a community whole, nor is it really my responsibility to make them whole. And here's the thing. 
Let's just say you've had a tornado go through a small Texas community that wipes out a majority of its infrastructure. FEMA is not trained, nor should we be responsible on how to tell that community how to generate sales tax revenue after you've lost a, a large portion of your infrastructure. We're not good at that. We're good at debris removal, saving lives, coordinating response to do those missions. When it comes to long-term economic viability after going through a disaster, I'm not so sure that that's FEMA's goal or mission. That, that might need to be the expertise of other portions of that whole community that I'm talking about. I would ask you uh, on behalf of uh, the folks here to continue talking to our governor's office because yeah. some of us are put in this type of situation. Uh, I, I'm not going to go in a second, uh, second uh, line of questions, so I'm just going to ask this last one. Texas has $10 billion in a uh, rainy day fund, uh, which I'm very familiar because we were in the state legislature when we created that. It rained in Texas. Sure. So I think uh, Texas should use, and I've said this publicly, I, I assume we all have, uh, whenever you have conversations, make sure that we talk to Texas to make sure they do their fair share also. You just can't come in sure. just from the federal government because people have a tendency of attacking the federal government but when they need cash, right. uh, the federal government is the best friend. So I just want to make sure that, you know, everybody has skin in the game. So I would ask you, when you have conversations with the governor's Absolutely. office, you go over that. Chairman, may I take a minute to respond to that? You may. L let, me, let me be clear about the state of Texas. You know, regardless of the issues that, that may take place inside Texas from disagreements on, you know, your view or the governor's view or whatever. Oh, Texas, we're, we're, we're yeah, yeah. pretty much on the same we're, view. No, no, no. But, but what I'm saying is, is that Texas is a model. And here's why. Because they're owning their disaster recovery. They are owning the, the recovery housing mission, and they're asking FEMA to support it. We've got to get all 50 states to start owning the recovery process. I don't know how to fix your state better than you do. OK, and, and my role should be one of a counselor of saying, here's what you're entitled to, to and here's what you're going to need to achieve those goals. When it comes to a rainy day fund, I think that the Congress should take a look at what states don't have them, period, so that when a federal disaster declaration is not coming forward, then what is the obligation of a state to step up and serve their own citizens? And are these rainy day funds actually designed to handle individual assistance and public assistance at a smaller scale until federal disaster assistance could be turned on at some point. So it's one thing to have a rainy day fund. It's another way of understanding how it's set up. And I think if we make a whole community improvement, then all these states need to have rainy day funds that are designed similar to the assistance that we put forward. But, but I'm just one, one opinion. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah.